for those of you who are starting out writing I'm going to go over some basic principles and tools that you can use to look at your writing. They're not rules that you should rigidly follow, they're just ways of understanding your story and can be very useful for breaking it down and, and finding where the problems are when you get stuck. So often we look at Hollywood films as following a kind of classic formula and you might even be thinking I don't want to follow some stupid formula. Um, but there is quite literally a formula that encapsulates uh, stories which we'll come to in the end. But let's start right at the very basics in terms of what makes something interesting. What is the very first thing you become aware of after you're born? And the answer to that is contrast. Contrast is the first thing you see and it's one of the core principles of design. If you look at the principles of design, there's various different versions of these, but unity, harmony, balance, rhythm, scale, emphasis. All these can be applied not just to the visual storytelling, the kind of contrast between the light in one scene and the next, but can also be applied to the story itself, the writing itself. So when you think of contrast as this core thing that makes something interesting, that gives you a question you can ask yourself when you're looking at your story. Is it different enough? Are these two characters different enough to each other to make this story interesting? Is there enough difference between one location and the next? Or alternatively, if there is no difference, if two characters are really similar, do you have a really good reason for them to be that similar? So it might be helpful to think about games like Street Fighter, you know, really what makes those exciting and interesting is the difference in the characters. They're all really different sizes, shapes, cultures, fighting styles, all of them are sort of extremely different as possible to make it exciting and interesting. So once you've established you need contrast, if we're writing a story for film or for TV, what does contrast look like over the course of time? And that is change. To maintain that contrast things need to change but then how do you make that change make sense you don't want just things changing randomly and that comes down to cause and effect there needs to be a, a coherent sequence of events that your audience can follow and understand there's a, a common refrain that is you can use a coincidence to get your hero into trouble but never out of it if we see someone in a desperate situation and suddenly there's a storm blows in and messes everything up, we don't mind that because shit happens in real life. But if, on the other hand, someone's stuck on the edge of a cliff and the baddies are descending on them, but suddenly a, a bird handily swoops by and picks them up and uh, they escape, if that's purely coincidental, that's not satisfying. If you've set that up earlier in the story so that there's a reason that bird happened to be passing that moment, then the audience will accept it. But if it's purely coincidental, getting a hero out of a scrape is not a good idea. This links to something in philosophy known as the coherence theory of truth, which is the idea that truth is created by how it connects to all the other parts, so the logical connections bet between a set of principles. And I think that's definitely true of stories. When a story feels true, it's because all the connecting parts fit within a logical structure. So you can set up your world with whatever rules you like really, as long as internally they all make sense with each other. So in terms of how this cause and effect plays out across your story, um, you can actually kind of plot this on a graph. So if you look up Kurt Vonnegut discussing story shapes, you'll see his x-axis is time, the path of the story, and the y-axis is between good fortune and bad fortune or literally between life and death. So this idea of a graph to tell your story can help uh, also understand the difference between a story and a plot. You can think of your plot as literally plotting points along that graph. So whilst a story might encapsulate the whole of someone's life, plot is just the moments of that life you pick out and the bits of that life you choose to tell. And the plot doesn't necessarily need to run in the same chronological order as the person's life. It can jump around different moments through flashbacks and so on. So one of the things I notice about kind of first drafts of people who are starting up writing is that their the structure of their story it makes sense, it kind of has cause and effect running through it. And whilst the ending might not exactly be predictable, it feels kind of inevitable. So you might have something bad happening to your character at the start, but then their journey back to success at the end feels kind of like you never 
worried about them falling back down the stairs. You might not know what's at the top, but you just can feel that they're, they're going to make it. You want your story to be predictable enough that your audience are anticipating what's going to happen next, but you don't want it so predictable that they're bored because they know what's going to happen. So there's a phrase that telling stories is doing the expected in an unexpected way. So we want our audience to think they know what's going to happen next, but then give them something a little bit different. So really your story wants to have lots of ups and downs and backwards and forths. It shouldn't feel too linear or too easy for your character. So what drives all these ups and downs and your character going back and forth? And you'll have heard the term a character driven story. So what makes a character driven story? A character driven story is a sequence of events caused by a character's choices. All the things that are happening in this story are determined by what the character is trying to achieve. A passive character going through life and just being affected by the world isn't as interesting, isn't as intriguing. Really you want a really active character who's making choices, making mistakes, messing things up for themselves, making their life harder and having to work to figure out how to get around those things. So in order for your story to be driven by your character and what they want and choose, you need to know a few things about them. So you need to know what they want, what's in their way, what's stopping them get what they want, and how do they plan to get it. You can look at their wants in, in several ways. There's what do they want, what do they need, and what are they afraid of, what are they running from. So quite often with characters, they'll want something, but you will establish that actually what they really need is not what they want. Only by getting what they want, they realize actually that's not what they need and they need to change in order to get something else. So understanding what a character wants, what they're afraid of, um, helps you set things up in a way that they're making choices that backfire and maybe make things worse and make them more difficult. It's really important that you're not nice to your characters. You need to let them make mistakes and deal with the consequences. And really you want to make life as difficult for them as you can. Why do you want to make life difficult for your character? Because that's really where drama lies. Drama is essentially making difficult choices. If someone wins the lottery and goes to pick up their lottery ticket, you know, and wins a million pounds and takes it home again, there's nothing really dramatic. But if someone wins the, a million pounds in the lottery and their dad's business is a million pounds in debt, but they've also, there's a chance to fly to the moon for a million pounds and that's what they've always wanted, that's what their biggest dream is and they're suddenly having to choose, do I help my dad out of debt and save his business or do I get my dream ticket to the moon? Suddenly you that's engaging your audience because, you know, it's asking your audience a question. It's asking them, what would you do? And if you can keep getting your aunt, your audience to keep asking themselves, oh, what would I do in that situation? How, you know, that's going to keep them engaged, keep them guessing what your character is going to do next and it's going to raise their expectations. So what, once you know what your character wants, how they plan to get it and what they really need, how do you start to structure that into a story? Well, there was something I was told by my aunt, who is an English teacher, who, when I was struggling a bit at school, she taught me how to plan an essay. And she said, an essay is always a horseshoe shape. You always come back to where you started. You can break your, your essay into three parts. You have a thesis, the idea that you want to explore. You have the antithesis, the opposite idea that you then explore. And then you have the synthesis, how those two ideas merge together and uh, resolve themselves. And those three parts are like a, a three act structure, your beginning, your middle and your end. And then you can go on breaking that down. Each one of those sections to so your thesis can be broken down into a thesis, antithesis and synthesis as well. And you can keep breaking that down almost right down onto, you know, onto the level of each sentence can have those kind of three component parts. And it, it occurred to me that this sort of structure I was taught for writing an argument is really similar to the story circle. So this story circle comes from a blog by Dan Harmon, which is really his interpretation of Joseph Campbell's hero's journey. And he compares a story to a hunter-gatherer having to leave the tribe, go out searching for something new and, and bringing it home um, to create change for his tribe, to improve life for his tribe. 
So we start with you, a character that is in their comfort zone, uh, but they want something. They go searching for it, and in doing so, they enter an unfamiliar situation, but they adapt to it. They keep searching, and then eventually they find what they wanted, but they pay a heavy price for it. And then when they return to their familiar situation, they've changed. Or he puts it very simply as, when you have a need, you go somewhere to search for it, you find it, you take it, and then return and change things, or not, as the case may be. So if you take this story circle totally literally, then obviously it doesn't apply to all stories. And if you tried to apply it literally, then all stories would end up being the same. So it's more about looking at it as a pattern where, you know, when we talk about returning home, we may not be literally going back to the physical place where you started, but it, it's about coming back to the idea that you, you set at the beginning of your story. It's keeping that horseshoe shape of, um, of the kind of exploring an idea and coming back to where you started. So this isn't exactly a tool for analysing stories, it's more of a curiosity, but if you take uh, that uh, story circle and apply it to Kurt Vonnegut's uh, story shapes graph, um, then as you go around the circle, over time what you create is a sine wave, um, and you see the ups and downs of the hero's journey. So I think it's, it's just useful to think rather than going in a circle which feels like you're going backwards to think of it as this sine wave, this journey of ups and downs. But as I just said, when you get back you bring change or maybe not. There are really only two kinds of story. You'll have heard people say there are seven basic myths or seven nine story types, but really either, you know, shit happens and then either you win or you lose. Or you've got comedy or tragedy, a happy ending or a sad ending. That's really the two fundamental story types. Okay, so once you've established where, when, who, what and why your story is about, how do you encapsulate this into a, a statement, a useful statement that helps you pitch your story or helps you refer back to what your story is? I mean, you can start with literally by writing a sentence down for each of these five questions. Where, when, who, what and why. It helps to put that into a, a statement which Leos Egri calls a premise and he goes into this in depth in the art of dramatic writing. But a premise is fundamentally a statement that you can prove true or false. It's like the moral of your story. What are you trying to say with this story? But if you can write out your premise in a really concise way, it's a really useful tool then for looking at your story and you can go back and see if any character or scene or anything doesn't relate to your premise, doesn't either try and prove it or disprove it, then you can pretty much cut that out of your story. Your story doesn't need it unless it relates to this premise. So an example that Leos Egri gives is Macbeth. Summing up Macbeth in the premise, ruthless ambition leads to destruction. So that tells us three things about our story. It tells us who our character is. They're ruthless. Uh, what their the central theme of the story is, or, or perhaps what their goal is, ambition. And this leads to the conclusion of the story, destruction. It tells us what happens in the end of the story. So you should be able to see how useful that is to keep referring back to and going, well, does my story tell me anything about this premise? Does this scene, this character relate to that premise? So in terms of then taking this premise and turning that into a pitch or a synopsis from your story, using those three component parts, you can construct a kind of sentence which tells the story. So one way of summing that up is, a, is an interesting character must do something incredible to make something amazing happen or stop something terrible from happening. So you describe your character, you describe what they're trying to achieve in the story and you're describing what the ending may or may not be, what the stakes for your story are. So one very powerful analogy we have for stories that we um, encounter in our everyday lives a lot, games, sports, computer games, board games, they all have the basic components of a story. So they have a goal, the thing that you want to achieve, winning the game. They have uh, an antagonist, the opposite other players in the game or the opposite team and they usually have a ticking clock for the end of the game or the number of rounds you play the game in. And a ticking clock is a really useful tool to, to build anticipation in your story, to 
give it a definite end point that you're heading towards, whether that is one of your characters about to get married, it's Christmas day that you're trying to get home for, or there's a bomb about to go off. You know, there can be lots of different types of events that we're building up to that keeps the pace of the story up. And taking that analogy of games, you can turn that literally into a formula. So the formula is a character A must do X before Y, despite B in order to achieve Z, where A is our protagonist, X is the goal, the thing they want, they're trying to achieve, before Y, Y is the ticking clock, despite B, the efforts of the antagonist. Remembering that an antagonist can also be their own behavior that's messing them up in order to achieve Z, and Z is end point of our, the result of our story. Remembering again that the, what they want to achieve and what the end result will be can be two different things. You know, they might really want something, but in achieving it, realize that what they need is something else. And that's what gives us the end of our story. So there you have it. That is literally the Hollywood formula. So it, it's a very useful way of looking at stories. It's not a formula you should follow blindly. Your story doesn't necessarily need a ticking clock, but it can be a very useful thing to keep the pace up but it's, what's useful about it is using it as a tool to analyze your story and if your story is not quite working then you know this might tell you why it's not also the reason for learning rules is so that you know how and when to break them so it's, it's really good to understand this formula it's not about following it it's about understanding it so that if you do decide to veer away from the basic story structure then you're consciously breaking these rules and you know what you're doing and so you can still write a great story